Hello, everybody, and welcome to the opening game here of BOL Platinum. I am Sharpie, and I'm joined by Gitano, and I think it's Gitano, right? Yes, correct. A lot of people Gitano. have said it many different ways, so you've won yourself an all expade pens trip to uh, to Hawaii, or wherever you like to go. Let's go with Hawaii. I'm down Perfect. for that. Um, <laughs> nice little tropical adventure. But before we go down to Hawaii and get our toes in the sand... All right, and uh, go. I'm gonna learn to surf down there too while I'm at it. We're gonna watch Blue Pearl Spire versus Clown Gaming FC, and we're right into the draft right away. Anything popping out to you at the very moment as we're already seeing a couple bands and a couple picks gone down, one for each side. Anything popping out to you? Uh, the Smolder, obviously, until that gets heavily nerfed. I think that should be banned out, unless you got first pick and you're uh, really raring to go on it here. Um, Tali mm -hmm. can make big giant plays, you know, Trundle being that absolute tank buster as well as you know, knocking down towers like there's no tomorrow. So that's what I'm seeing from uh, Clown Gaming on the other side. What do you see in the blue blue pearl spire? One thing that's really standing out to me is this Ivern ban, as well as the Zyra ban. So definitely some people on Clown Gaming FC have built a bit of a name for themselves on these champions because these are picks you rarely see banned. They're typically going to be target bans. So Zyra off the table, Ivern off the table, let, let it be so. And Blue Pearl Spire gonna start off with that Jinx pick, a very strong Premier AD carry, followed up by Clown Gaming gonna go with the Kaisa Maokai. I'm assuming the Maokai is gonna be support, but it can be flexed to the jungle and even on some situations top lane. So a nice little flex pick there for themselves to go with the Kaisa. Yeah, I used to Maokai top all the time and he's still viable, but just not as much seen there. Um, Volley Bear and Braum being picked up some cold winter weather going on over here. I'm guessing the Volibear could be top lane as well, could be flexed to the jungle. Braum definitely hitting the support, so they have their bot lane picked early. We'll see what Clown Gaming decides to respond with. So you're saying it's not going to be the lethal tempo Braum top lane. That's what you're saying. <laughs> I, it could be. You never know. People have their pocket picks, and I'm uh, interested to see if they bring something like that out. Uh, back in my day when I played in leagues, I was known for being permanently banned Evelyn against me, and I was a top laner. So Evelyn top got banned against me quite a bit, and then I switched to playing Rek'Sai top lane, and that got banned as well. And so I did some fun things in the top lane, and Braum support and the, throwing that into the top lane was something I experimented with. So you never know what could go on down there. As Huey is going to be the last pick there for Clown Gaming before the second half of bands. They're going through him pretty... Pretty quick, Swain and Ari off the table, some great mid lane mid laners uh, for Blue Spire. Swain, obviously a nice, you know, like DPS drain tank to go there for them. And Ari, just 
a premier blind pick mid laner. Yeah, definitely Ari into everything, and that's why it can be so annoying. You get some extra stacks early, and you just start running rampants around everyone. So, yeah, it's... Oh, good God. I I feel like in this ELO still, it's like how you play the champ, not what you play. Just because, like you said, I've had pocket picks of like Kha'Zix mid, and you know, oh, it's yeah. done wonders just because I can play it well, and I know that champion inside it out. So I'm guessing we're going to see some mastery tier uh, plays out of these people here. Yeah, I'm excited to see it. And Clown Gaming are hovering the Nunu, which I think Volibear and Braum are happy about. They say, hey, we like the winter. We're from the Frell Yard. Give us your snow and we'll show you what we can do with it. We've got two seconds left on this. Nunu might be the lock in here. And yes, yeah. it will be. So uh, Nunu and Willump going to be rolling snowballs across the rift today. And that's going to be exciting to watch. I mean, Volibear and Braum do like the cold, yes. But when you have a giant snowball probably towering in-game look feel like 20 feet high you might be a little nervous you might be a little bit nervous especially if you're the jinx you know so yeah. that snowball hits you then Huey can follow up with that damage in CC Kaisa come rolling around to the back good luck so we'll have to see what they want to pick here Victor is going to be the counter pick into the Huey so he wants to clear out those ways pretty quickly and roam around through these fights we'll have to see how that works out for them but the Victor and Jinx are some really good mid to late game scaling DPS champions Victor obviously puts up a lot of damage with some burst Jinx as well can do some burst with that zap into the rocket for a champion that gets below about half health and their top lane blind pick looks like they want to go for the Aatrox yeah, definitely yep, kind of that, that lane bully there. And right now, I'm not seeing a lot of dive onto the Jinx. Yes, you could maybe hit a Kai'Sa ability and dive to that backline um, Maokai ult, but I don't see any giant threats to dive the Jinx. So I think that front to back feel, unless I have might have to eat my words here with the Camille. Camille would be a good pick. There's four, there's three AD champions. So I would not be surprised if they attempt a Malphite as well here. But Camille would be a great pick into the Aatrox. No, they're going to pivot back to... Is this going to be a lock-in? Oh, we've yes. got a Fiora. <laughs> so, wet noodles with a, maybe a tack on the end of it is what we're going to see in the top lane. Just nice back and forth here. Um, I'm interested to see how this mid lane matchup plays out. I have not seen a Victor Wei play yet with each other, so I'm interested. Yeah, Huey and Victor should be fun to watch. They both have a lot of potential to just, if you land everything correctly, you can just straight up win the lane either way. So I think yeah. it's very much going to be a skill matchup. Same with topside Aatrox. Fiora is very much on how can Aatrox play around that CC? Can Fiora use the repost at the right times to block the right knockups and the right stuns and stuff like that? Because Volibear comes running through as well. If you use it at the wrong time, you're in a lot of trouble. Yeah, so yeah. I think the top lane's going to be a lot of fun. Mid lane's going to be a lot of fun to watch as well. <laughs> Bot lane, you could just, you know, throw a little tree saplings, nice little snow doors at people and just kind of play it easy and watch everyone else play. But that's the other thing, too. You don't want to be bot lane and just doing your mundane tasks and all of a sudden the whole game develops and now you're like, ooh, I should get in there at some point. <laughs> do you think, do you reckon that Maokai might be a little offended that Braum is running around with a big wooden door? I... <laughs> I feel like at this point he's had enough exposure to what's going on that he mm. doesn't understand mm. that way of things. Um, but an angry Maokai, I mean, you don't want a giant tree end coming at you. That's that seems horrible. That's nightmarish. You know, a, a big a big tree end, especially one that does that takes the lives of its little saplings and says, "I will just toss you out in front of you and let you do all my hard work." That's that is a daunting task. And as a Lord of the Rings connoisseur, I can say Ents can be very scary, especially if you're a tall wizard with gray hair. Thankfully, there are no gray haired wizards in this game for Blue Pearl Spire, so they don't have to worry about that too much at the moment. I kind of hope next time we see a Maokai and then a White Mage figure on the other side just completely. There we go. <laughs> on, top, on top of each other. Um, I mean, unless Maokai does bring like maybe a, a cat outfit going on, then I may be happy to see the tree in because he does, you know, little cat saplings. You know, I, I'm a little less scared at that point. The true lore accurate build would be a white mage Vagar, and then you have a Maokai jungle coming in with a Nami support, throwing that wave through with the Ent coming in. That is the lore accurate uh, Lord of the Rings gank. <laughs> I want to see that one of these days, but we're not getting it today, unfortunately. We so do have the Aatrox. That, that could be the, you know, you shall not pass with the Vigor on the other side. You know, he kind of looks like he could be guarding inside the mountain. I, I think Aatrox is giving me a bit more um, 
what is it, a Balrog vibes than a, than a Gandalf, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but any predictions you've got for this game, which team comp are you favoring in this one? Oh, that's just a loaded question, but I'm gonna go with Blue Pearl Spire. Just looking at the team comp here, great scaling. You got the CC from the Brawn early off, just in case they do wanna try and invade. Uh, I think late game is gonna be monstrous as well as nothing to really dive the Jinx and really put that pressure on. So that's where my vote's going. What about yours? I like your thinking. I'm going to go contrarian here a little bit. I think Nunu can make it happen. I think Fiora can win in the side lane. And it's all about that Kai'Sa, I think, for your 4-1. Can you get that CC to allow Kai'Sa to reposition? I think they can do it. So I'm giving it to Clown Gaming here. They have a lot of CC with the Maokai, with the Nunu, the Huey with that fear and that grab claw thing. There's a lot that Kai'Sa can work around here. And then as the game progresses, like I said, Fiora is just going to win out in the side lane. So... I'm going to give it to them, and you've got to Blue Pearl Spire. One of us will be right, and one of us will be wrong. We're going to throw it to a quick little break as we get, wait for the spectator delay and for the champ picks to go through in the client. When we get back, we've got game one between Blue Pearl Spire and Clown Gaming FC. Don't go anywhere.
All right, we had a small hiccup loading into the lobby. We had some black screen of death going on for all of us basically trying to watch this, but we made it in for game one here, and we're starting off with a very exciting five point. Let's see how this one plays out, though. <laughs> yeah, 1v1 me, bro, all the way across the field. Let's see who turns out the better man. Oh, Victor uh, causing the first damage there. You know, if they're going for the first first damage win, that's game over. They can quit and restart it again. Mental gap secured for the Victor. I'm just going to peek in. Oh, he got the Mana Flow Band stack as well. So definitely worth there for Eros there in the mid lane. Laning edge secured indeed. Malkai and company just grabbing a little bit of vision there. And the deep looks like they'll be running back to blue for Dundu. Oh, yeah. There we go. I'm just adjusting some of my things on my display so that I have everything looking correct. Nunu is going to be solo taking that camp. Topside and same with the Volibear. Solo starting the Wolves down there. So, Yeah, both standing in the bush. Just a little bit of a steering contest. Fedora, the good old annoying champion. Uh, she was one of my... Ones that I just hated playing against because she could just use and abuse and as soon as she got the lead, that was it. Fiora is definitely one of those champions that if you give her an inch, she will take a mile from you. So, gotta be very careful when dealing with the Fiora lane. Aatrox doing a great job of going back and forth. Anything standing out as far as summoner spells or starting items, abilities? Looks pretty stock standard to me. Kaisa does have the lethal tempo, which does allude towards that AD build, potentially the on hit build that some people have been experimenting with for Kaisa. It's not going to be that lethality Kaisa. It's not going to be that poke Kaisa where you go full AP and hit the W button and win team fights from 16 screens away. But uh, Kaisa does want to go in there and go for some fights. So that's good to see. We're going to see some scrappy gameplay and not people just sitting back and poking at each other. But here comes Nunu. Oh, first Snowball of Century, that 20-foot blockade gain sent out by Braum. Great job having that there. Mid lane, nice little poke war going back and forth. Uh, uh, let's see. Nunu did manage to blow the ghost from Fallen. So, you know, you, you got the summoner spell and you continue roaming around. Nunu's looking again for another gank there in the mid lane. Here he oh, comes. Victor, got to be careful there. Does get popped by the Snowball. Getting down there. Oh, flashing out. So saves dying, but unfortunately the summoner spell down and Nunu being the nuisance that he is, the repeat ganks that can come out of nowhere. So he's got to be wary of that. Volley Bear is going to kind of peek up there, throw down the storm. Nothing's going to really happen with that. So two ganks now for the Nunu, two summoner spells blown, flash for uh, Victor there, and the ghost for the Jinx, so nice set of ganks there early on for this Nunu who wants to be playing with a lot of tempo, and securing some nice little subtle advantages as here comes Volibear. Coming in there, unfortunately, another flash blown on the other side, this time by Kaisa top lane as well, some trades back and forth going as well, saplings being tossed, not caring about his little sapling friends. Yeah, both these junglers are not really looking to all in for these plays, as here comes Nunu, though. This is <laughs> trouble. Coming around. Oh. Nice flash by Aatrox. Very, very good job. Trying to get away here. Fedora slowing them down. Aatrox grabbing her back. Nunu slowing down with the snowballs there. Does get rooted up as well. Fiora trying to get in there. Getting low. Down to about 100 health. Both times. First blood going over. First Blood going to be picked up there by Fiora. And I just got to shout out the Nunu here. Four minutes into the game has blown two flashes and a ghost <laughs> defensively to these ganks. He's been running all over the place. Then Ghoster continues to follow up on a gank. But meanwhile, speaking of following up on ganks, here comes Volibear. Volibear on their side there. Maokai trying to bite off a little bit more than he can chew. And a great job coming around that backside by the bear. Yeah, both of these junglers have been just so proactive, and I love to see that. They're looking for gank after gank after gank. Nunu clearing out topside. Volibear going to be throwing up this dragon. I don't think it will be contested just because you got that initial win there for the Jinx, who's going to be able to crash another wave. Kaisa, of course, because of the death on the Maokai, has to reset to go and spend a little bit of gold because you don't want to be staying 1v3. 
And that will secure the dragon unless Maokai throws in a sapling and it just gets one of those really random steals. But I don't think that will be the case down there. Dragon going over to Islamic Samurai on the Volibear. Boom, there it goes. <laughs> Boom goes the dynamite. I think deep wards are going to be the thing to have this game. You got to be able to see the game coming. And so far with these active junglers, you know it's going to be happening with your summers blown. So just great job here. I see blue wards leading all the way up to the wolves on that one side. So they are going to be prepared mm -hmm. for that Nunu. They definitely are. And Nunu here is going to be starting to take up those uh, those little grublings, whatever you want to call them. I've heard a bunch of different names. I've heard Kevin's. I've heard Ed, Ed, and Eddie. I've heard, what was it? Louie, I love Ed, Ed, and Eddie. <laughs> from uh uh what is that tails uh, all sorts of different names for them but you know what what are we going to call them tonight they are technically void grubs but do they need to be maybe they have names how they identify oh good alt has going come down out. gravity field locking down a couple there alt as well being below nunu getting oh, in no. trying to throw a couple of snowball finding anything unfortunately and volley bear flashing in there trying to Oh, grab someone up, not gonna have Maokai setting them back. It looks like we have Rob on the other side, trying to get a little bit of CC lockdown. Maokai getting a little bit lower, does get taken down there. Bear versus Tree, Bear wins, going in for a second one there. Picks, nope, doesn't pick up a double, grabs it over to Jinx, gets resets, gets excited, and is chasing down Nunu for the double. Just a bit of an overextension there. You were having, you got so close to killing the victor, and you just kind of overcommit for it. As we see a trade topside, very close to Vay Caution there. Endo almost won that one out. I want to pay attention now. Jinx, 3 and 0, double boots, has the red buff. If she starts even poking you, she's going to be able to run you down on that outside. Maokai throwing that sapling down, just saying, hey, Volley Bear towards the backside. Nunu on the top side here. Aatrox pushing up a little too far in the lane gank, but does get away. Yeah, I just you know, kind of hearkening back to that earlier play there onto the Victor. Victor surviving with maybe 50 health left, and they just kind of overextend to look for that. Stick around for a bit too long, and that allows the Jinx to roam up, the Braum to roam up, the Volibear to come in through the top side and hand over three kills with that volibear picking up one and jinx picking up the double kill as they chase down the ending of the play and that's a big lead over to fallen's jinx who's going to be very snowball in this match and we're looking at a pretty lore accurate jinx here in this game so far yeah she is gonna be uh wreaking some chaos and some havoc here if she continues like this already completing just about that first time probably around that 1500 mark away so possibly next back Grabbing the first item complete. A lot of boots, too, being completed here as well as far as junglers, mid laners. Yeah, they. everyone's got to be worried about ganks. This <laughs> Nunu is everywhere. Folly Bear is closely right behind. Yeah, I love the action. Just love it. It's kind of hard to say much about this game because the moment we try to analyze what's going on, another <laughs> gank is being thrown down. They're just happy to scrap at any moment in the game. I've had some games where the first death goes down at 19 minutes and they're just happy to sit back and farm their waves. Not this one though. And I think as fans and casters alike, we're happy to see that. Yeah, just action packed brawl. You, you just can't get enough. Doesn't matter who's playing. You just want to see the action. Jinx Fallen. just wreaking havoc on these back lines again, pushing up that lane. Great ward, ward controls. They have the new new kind of pinned where he's at right now. Oh, if you are trying to get Aatrox a little bit, going back and forth here. She could win this, but she doesn't know Volibear's there. He uses the repost. Endo should have baited down a bit more, but here comes Ayo Penguin. Ooh. Does get locked down a little bit by the door, but no one else is there to knock on the other side. Ward clear here by the Volibear. They have... A little less than a minute here for the dragon. We'll see if that is up next on their to-do list or if they're Mal happy to trade. Coming down here, does lock up the Jinx. So it's advance going on there. Does shove her back into the tower. Great Wombo come. Still taking the damage. Uh -oh. Shut down. Going over to the Kai'Sa. Has to blow the heal so she does not die. But Maokai falling on the other side. Here comes Nunu yet again. <laughs> taking that nice turn driving school there. Finds three, has to blow a flash to get out of there. Oh, they are just, every time we see one, there's two or three right there within five seconds.
it is definitely going to be worth there on the box bot side for the kaisa you get to get that shutdown onto the jinx you get to push in a couple waves pick up a free plate jinx gonna lose a bunch of xp off of that so you've evened up in the xp department and top side you are going to be giving up those grubs so it's not going to be that four or five like that five mark that's pivotal for getting those ones that spawn every time you push up but that means you get to go onto the bot side and occupational hazard can snag that dragon to prevent this dragon stacking and dragons are going to be evened up here one to one unless a super mega death rocket which is on cooldown for another 15 seconds kills it off and i doubt that'll happen maybe victor can try something though here maybe it'll just blow a little bit up couple of seconds too late but it never hurts to try and two dragons going down at the 11 minute mark i've seen some games this game is just on pace to be a lot faster than normally like you've said the 19 minutes and just getting first blood i've seen dragons not being taken to you know 15 20 minutes if they really just want to harp the lane phase but yeah i think 30 minutes this one's going to be done before then yeah, very fast dragon stacking indeed and so much action both of these teams they're they're not looking for any scaling despite some scaling that they may have they want to win it and they want to win it now maybe they've got a date maybe one of the players has a date tonight they say hey, we don't have time for these long <laughs> series i've got dinner reservations in 45 minutes and we need two quick 20 minute games and then i can go get dinner i'm not going to be late to my tinder date and uh you know respect for that but either way, whatever their reasoning is, they're playing fast and they're playing loose with their with their health bars and with their ultimate abilities. And you know what? I'm here for it. Yeah, they're playing league. They don't have... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> A lot of us have dates and significant others. We're, we're parties. All right. Anyway, back to the action here. Victor blowing everything down mid. Less than 10 health. Oh! And unfortunately, Jinx Rocket passing through. But that is a fall for the mid lane. You know, I respect it. They both just sit there mid lane. They're like, you know what? It's 1v1 time. Let's do it. Let's <laughs> throw down the gauntlet right now and see who wins it. Cyclone comes out on top, falling through out that super mega, death, super mega death rocket, and it was just a little bit short, so Ooh. doesn't get the kill. If Kaisa flashing away from that uh, glacial fissure from Braum, so nothing going to be happening there. But Nunu's looking again. It's like as if, oh, yeah, Nunu taking that nice sharp turn. Your as well following up does grab a couple of alts here. Nunu, oh, Ooh. how did he survive? <laughs> I think he got that ultimate off a hair outside yes. of tower range. So the tower reset onto the Fiora and occupational hazard definitely is an occupational hazard to himself, but lives as we see a dive spotlight. Yeah, it was advanced going on to the Jinx. Good job trying to get her out. Does have a little bit of the outside, blowing the flash, getting in there, taken down by the tower. That kill going over to the Maokai. Volley Bear being the next target here, trying to get it out of there. Looks like he throws down the Summoner Circle of Death. Does end up getting the kill here on Kai'Sa. Three on one. Teleport coming in towards the backside, but we also have Nunu coming up top here as he is going to be looking for blood. He Pure as well. Flashing in there. Nice parry going down Ooh. by the Victor. Volley Bear does end up falling here it looks like Braum might be the next target as though they are going on Victor and Victor also will be falling a three a three for two I believe that three for, was, I think it was a three, three for three, one because that Kaisa fight went dropped. on so long <laughs> yeah what a what a fight there it was a tower dive that went completely wrong for them like you, you look for the dive you throw down the maokai ult in response you lock people down jinx tanks up one tower shot at the very end and drops and then the chase from the fjord with that teleport picking up a bunch of kills for herself but now here we go top maokai, the tree visiting up top this is just heavy hitters all the way around this is the ufc if you're thinking the heavyweight division they're not going to the ground they're not playing the mental strat it's me against you fist against fist we'll see who who ends up surviving yeah, Maokai is absolutely not living up to his name at all. He's His name is AFK Boulder, but he's been all over the place, has four deaths, three assists. He's definitely been gaming here. So we want to take a peek, boss. Like, Fallen might go for this. Yep, there it is. Does, just gets the nice crit right outside the tower range. Nothing to do. A little bit of a caged-in moment there by Kai'Sa. Still has the heal, but, you know, do you use it or you say, all right, you, I give, you got this one. Smart play there by Kaisa as well to stack up the two auto attacks on Kraken Slayer and use the big one, but we're seeing another fight mid. Ugh. Victor, unfortunately, just not having that survivability just yet. No Zanyas, nothing to kind of counteract. Unfortunately, Volibear just a 
shy away a bit there. Aatrox blowing the ult, thinking the fight was going to go a little bit further, but Fiora does end up backing up. Now, we're sitting here at 15 minutes. There are 18 kills in the game. I have a theory. I'd like to I'm pose listening. a theory. Yes. I think this game, we are going to see zero semblances of anything that could resemble macro play. The way that they've played the early game says I could care less about macro as Vaykosh and is kind of split pushing, but that's not really macro either. That's just shoving your wave. Um, I'm not going to call that macro. Um, I think there's not going to be any strategic rotations. There's not going to be, you know, people pulling people this way and that way. They're just throwing down the gauntlet at every avenue. They're just looking for dives at every moment they can. It's all about the 1v1. It's all about the can I click my button smarter than you can. It's all about the scrappiness and all about the fights. I don't think there's going to be any macro in this game whatsoever. I think maybe they queued up for ARAM, but they put it on the wrong map. But they're still in that mentality of everyone is going there to be fighting go. all the time. It is very much ARAM mentality indeed in this one. It is the mechanics of gods and the macro of iron. And I love to see it. It's, just on, <laughs> it's, on, it's on site here. See, look at Kaisa just running up for it anyways. Has no support. No idea where anyone is. Has to ult away because of it. It's just bangers. I, I love this. <laughs> It makes for great, great casting here, at least for the play-by-play, -play, because I am going, I'm going to be out of breath here. You might have to do the entire cast here for the next one. It is just rumbles in the jungle every single time. Like, this directed camera is going to every lane about every five seconds. We're just seeing it switch. Nunu will see if he comes up with something cheeky, does not turn left. Unfortunately, has that right blinker on. Nothing. Yeah, I think they, we're going to have a brief pause here so you can catch your breath as the, all both teams have elected to take a reset. Basically, what they want to do is they say, hey, look, those past like 38 fights have been fun. Let's spend some money and do it again. That's what they're on. That's what they're on about. So we'll all have right. to see where they elect to fight next. Let's let's take a look at some items while we have a little break in the action. Anything standing out for you? Um not really at the moment uh kaisa did go for kraken slayer so it's definitely going to be that dps crit build maokai throwing down the old bot side to secure the tower but that's gonna be nothing more than a tower secure so guess what we had a little bit of macro there <laughs> we got some not a lot but you know just a small appetizer worth of an order they're playing aram in three lanes that's what they're doing <laughs> it's that it takes talent i mean I, I can barely play it in one lane, but three? Oof. Nunu going for the tank build, so we're not seeing a Kesha Nunu build, and no screaming going to be going on in the comms. Top lane, Ravenous Hydra picked up. Bay Caution is playing very aggressively, and I love to see it. Uh, uh, standard stuff for Aatrox, Volibear. Jinx has two items, though. Has that uh, Infinity Edge second, and Brom went for the Locket, which is very... Not that I don't see that super often, but I guess if you want to be shielding up to prevent, you know, a Kaisa or a Fiora running in, just have that little bit of extra tankiness. I'm I'm here for it. So well, Locket with is definitely fight, not a bad item. The team fights that's going on here, you're going to be fighting 24/7, so you might as well help protect the team just a little bit. Also, I want to note the Dark Seal going out on this side here. So oh, yeah. maybe gonna maybe change the way you play just a little bit, just being a little bit more cautious or go the complete opposite way where you're like oh i'm getting kills let's get this fully stacked and get going nunu running down that mid lane here is gonna find that braum door once again that's a great mitigation for that braum braum is a nice pick into a nunu and <laughs> oh afk boulder careful there's the flash <laughs> he's a Double giant tree TP. he'll be fine they're oh, fighting they this here we go side as well as way going down Brom knocking the door down, trying to find someone, does end up escaping there. Nunu ult going towards the center, Aatrox being the point of focus going down here. And so close Fiora going down, not able to find it. Nunu charging up just a little bit off of that bite, unfortunately taking a little bit too much damage here from the victor. And health bars are super low on that side. I think everything is down, I've seen minus <laughs> two flashes here. Yeah, we see four three teleports. Flashes. One, two, three, four, five, six flashes burned, and two people die. It's the exact opposite of how this game has been going so far. They've been having all these scraps in the side lane, and then the moment that we have a true 5v5, everyone walks away on slivers of health. And I think 
My theory is that happened, and they're like, Let, you know what, guys, let's not do that again. If we're going to have a 5v5, we need at least half the board to be in gray screen. <laughs> That's the way you do it right there. It's, oh. ugh, all the fights there are just happening right now. I, I'm going to say just don't poke the bear. Just don't poke the bear, but they seem to be, seem to be doing that. Baron coming, uh, well, Baron being Baron. the... Maybe next point of focus here, Dragon's coming up. Uh, the third one got stolen. I didn't even see when that one got taken here. And looks yeah. like time break for the uh, for the next contest. And that'll be in 30 seconds. There's been Another a lot of action going play. on. <laughs> uh, maybe there's no teleports topside. So Fiora wants to run over there as soon as possible because he shoved that wave in. Hopefully she will go over there and try to pressure for the Dragon. Nope, going to head back topside. I think, and try to push in and put some pressure onto the base as the rest of the team heads over to contest the dragon. We're going to have, that means, in my opinion, a 4v4 fight, as it look, might be kicking off right here. Yeah, Volibear summoning down the thunder as well, trying to find the tree. Unfortunately not, does end up clearing that pink, though. Not that we're out of the uh, fight lock yet. Aatrox trading a little bit here with the Fiora, has the guidance of the tower, though, at their back. starting it up. I don't know if she did. Nope, she has not yet. Dragon is still sitting. Nobody's touching it yet. They're just kind of hovering around. I don't know why they haven't started this Baron up yet. I mean, this Dragon up yet. There goes Bala Bear going to be heading down to start it up. As yeah, they're they have the inside team. track. It's, uh, it's time do. to pull the trigger. Fiora doing a great job locking up that Aatrox just outside of tower range. They're trying to eke their way in to contest this Dragon. A nice little grab going to come out Way damage is starting to hit onto Ayo Penguini. And there is the He's going to secure it. They're going to fight this though either way. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> you flown too close to the to the sun or the tree at this time. Malachi trying to get in there. Might be the first one. Nope. Volley Bear ends up going down tree soon to follow Nunu. Getting towards that backside. Jinx does find it as well. We are looking towards that dragon fight yet. Way being the next one to go down. Kaisa will be... The next to look here will be escaping, though Aatrox trying to... Oh god, Fiora just diving in the back here, lane proxying and not caring at all. Fiora proxying inside the base at 22 minutes is the most Fiora thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I think might actually take this tower here because Braum's going to be too late to the party. Yep, that's going to be the inhibitor turret down, so you lose the dragons. So that's three dragons over soul point, but... Inhibitor is broken. The base is now open and Fiora is having a field day. Yeah, now it's going to be who do we send to help this Aatrox deal with it? And you don't want to take these fights uneven just because we've seen how these fights are going down and both teams are leaving on their last leg, you know, less than 200 HP on both sides. So the moment you give someone up for those fights, it's not going to turn well. So we'll see if the first team to really teeter totter, you know, this dance back and forth, who's going to give? Gold is very even, only about 1,500 gold dragon advantage over one side, but tower and, uh, you know, map pressure on the other with that bit of gold as well in pocket because of those objectives, those towers that are off the table. So it really anyone's game at this point still kind of surprising that three dragons have gone over against the Nunu. If you're, if, if you're Nunu, you really want to be snagging those dragons, so it's kind of sad that uh you know blue pearl spire has been able to pick up those three against clown gaming but uh actually i think their their name is clown gaming fc and the fc does not stand for football club it stands for forklift certified <laughs> i respect it I, it's a, hard to get those a, licenses you need <laughs> i am i am forklift certified that is some real sharpie lore for you i am forklift certified so does that auto qualify me as a member of clown gaming I believe so. It's in the name. You can't say it's not in the name. It's like EA Sports. It's in the name. It's in the name indeed. So I guess I am now a clown gaming honorable member. <laughs> the fan club. They should be able to send you some packages, right, for that? I, I think I'm, I'm going to await a care package. Bay Caution is sending a care package over to Arrows, and the care package is a gray screen. Welcome to death for another 45 seconds. Go get a drink. Go tell your Tinder date you're going to be late. This game's going a while. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Also, Jinx here completing the Lord Dominic, so that is going to be shredding the tanks even more. 8, 2, and 3. 
And the opposite Ooh. side of that, Fiora as well, guiding the Triforce, the Hydra, she's just going to be a monster towards those side lanes. So now it's, you know, who's fed more and... All in! Who's get first. Oh, sorry, Ball my camera's still stuck in this bottom lane here. Yeah, the Victor Jinx got Jinx. picked off by the Kaisa. I saw that there. I, I saw the fight happen. I peeked up there before the spectator did, and Jinx <laughs> just straight up got caught out by Kaisa. So this could be J Baron over to Clown Gaming, forklift certified. They are going to be Baron certified here as well. In about two one zero, bam! There we go. Baron certification secured for Clown Gaming. Bay Caution now going to be really happy on that split push for yours. Solo killing people on the side lane, proxying into the base, and now purple belts on your minions. This is a big advantage over to Clown Gaming Forklift Certified. They're going to be taking a lot of towers here and building up a nice goal lead. It was a 1500 goal lead. Now it is a 6000 goal lead and it will only grow over the next few minutes of Baron Buff. Yeah, that could be a little too much weight on the one side that really tips that scale towards the balance here. Still plenty of time to, you know, just hunker down, turtle a little bit, let the Baron time run out, but we'll see how much they really do shove that down. If you do 4-1, send that viewer top, everyone else go bottom, and kind of do that dance here of, all right, who are you going to send while we push this? Fiora is going to be putting on a lot of pressure there top sign. They are going to have teleports to react to it if they want to, but that Baron push is going to be very difficult to answer. Aatrox, I can see on the minimap, is going to teleport back to try to respond to it, but Fiora is 5-0, and has a Triforce and two other items on top of that, so you're going to be very hard-pressed to match that. The fight's going to happen mid lane, though. Yeah, Volibear trying to get entered in here, does find a couple of people. Victor on the backside, though. Brom locking down the door. Does find one. Fiora on the other side, though. Trying to backdoor here with the Aatrox going down. And unfortunately, goes down. We'll see if how many people can answer this. One TP coming out right now. We'll see if they end up stopping it. They do not. But I don't know how much damage Victor can do. Throws down the field. Trying to slow him down. Does go in here. Okay. Does get stunned up. But there's not a lot of damage. Victor getting poked out here as Fiora's well. Fiora's just going to end the game. Oh my god. It's still... <laughs> That's ending as well. Way also going towards that mid, gets the TP and final hit towards the Nexus. That was a, that's a way to end the, the game. <laughs> that is definitely one of the endings of League of Legends of all time. Top lane gets <laughs> fed and just put pushes for the victory. What, what a weird one. What that a game. <laughs> That was just everything everywhere, and I'm okay with it. If the next two matches are like this and we go to three games, I'm going to be happy duck. Yeah, it was you know great stuff by both junglers here. Nunu was very effective there, getting the Fiora a bit of a lead there with that early gank, giving Fiora first blood, and Fiora kind of ran away with it from there. Fallen did their very best on the Jinx to try to keep up in that team fight pressure, but then that one little mistake, getting caught there by the Maokai, Kaisa ults in there underneath tower, steals that kill into Fallen, which sets up for Baron, which means Fiora can really start the game, gets solo kills in the sideline, killing off the Aatrox, killing off the Victor, pushes right into the base and straight up ends it. So good job over to Vaykosh and the Fiora. And we have to call into question now, some of those bans, are they going to shift around? Because up against that Fiora, you banned away that Ivern and that... Uh, Zyra, so maybe you pivot away and get rid of the Nunu. Maybe you get rid of the Fiora because of how much of, of an oppression it was in that game. Yeah, Nunu doing a great job early getting the lane pressures for everyone. Kind of getting that Fiora as well. A couple of nice games going up top and really just keep feeding her and capitalizing on it. And a great push and pull method by her. Just keep on giving, you know, her team a little bit of space to breathe. And at the very end, just hammering home that advantage. Yeah, a great game though overall just fun to watch as these teams are scrapping it out for the entirety of the first 20 minutes just throwing down the gauntlet moment after moment after moment and i'm hoping to see more of that in game two as we get ready for that let's throw this into a quick little break though don't go anywhere we're coming right back for some more emerald action here in the blue otter league we'll see you soon
All right, after a brief reprise to go and do whatever you needed to do, we're back for game two, and we're kicking off this draft right away. First things first, I just wanna say, the draft has started off exactly the same, except for we're switching sides. Clown Gaming now going to be on blue side, and they're going to do the same thing as game one, where they're going to first ban away that Talia. Yeah, a couple of familiar bans coming out here as well on both sides. We'll see if any new ones get picked up, or if they say, all right, you know, we gave you round one, but we can run it back for game two. And we were kind of talking about it during the break. Do you think, what do you think if they want to ban away that Fiora or that Nunu? Maybe they ban away both, but what do you think was more of the problem in that game? Was it the Fiora being just a really good Fiora and winning it out? Or was it because Nunu was able to give Fiora that first blood? And that was their win condition as the Jinx goes down and ban against Blue Curl Spire. I think it was the Nunu as well as a couple of other roams that happened there that really got that Fiora because we saw a whole bunch of trades going back and forth. It wasn't that Atrox wasn't holding his own. It was just unfortunately Fiora had the edge throughout the entirety because of those early ganks by Nunu as well as the follow up by the team. There were one or two moments where the Aatrox came within maybe 10 health of killing that Fiora. I think I remember one or two like that. They're going to stick with their guts for now, though. They've banned away the Zyra, so maybe they're banning, they're switching the Ivern ban as the Smolder going to be banned, banned away on blue side. Very odd to see that. Typically, yeah. the Smolder is a red side ban. Just in case you're not comfortable with it, you don't want to have, unfortunately, you know, an easy pickup for the red side, and then all of a sudden you're trying to counteract that looks like bands pretty much going to stay the same except clown gaming pivoted away from the trundle ban and banned the jinx instead outside of that bands the same first pick for clown gaming going to be that varus which is most likely going to be 80 carry but i've seen a few people play in mid lane and then there's that weird kind of ap tank top lane build that you can do as well so varus though most likely going to be 80 carry i am one of those mid laners that plays Varus on the off chance if there is a favorable matchup but uh a little part of me gets a little giddy and say what if they are playing the lord of the rings uh side here you picked up the Varus. Oh, there we go Valkai, maybe an olaf they start running it i i have to throw my vote over then if they end up picking another person or two here the Varus white beard the the, the Varus, what is it the, Swift uh, Volt Varus is a real go. thing. And then you have to pick the, the, the Rise Whitebeard mid lane to have that <laughs> Lord of the Rings fantasy world uh, pick a team comp right there. As Sivir and Jarb are going to go over, Shirima and Demacia now represented for Blue Pearl Spire. Uh, Sivir is kind of in a weird spot right now. She's not great. She's not terrible. She's kind of a wave clear bot that tends to win out the game but the problem when she gets to like 400 cs but the problem is there are champions like that kogma like that smolder and like jinx who can just scale better than she can thankfully smolder off the table Co uh jinx off the table and varus has been picked so you feel pretty good about your late game scaling volibear though it seems like it's going to be the pick going over to clown gaming so 
they are not going to be picking the Nunu again. They want the Volley Bear for themselves. Yeah. And back to that Ziver pick, it's a great team. If you have that run M mentality and really need to catch up to people, like that virus right now, I gotta be thinking in the back of my head, J4 is gonna put me in the Thunderdome here pretty early and pretty often. Ari picking up on the other side. Great blind pick as you called back in that first game. Didn't really go into any mid lane matchup. You, you know, it's gonna have a little bit of an edge there as well as that pick with that charm potential happening. One person walking the wrong way just for that second or two. As we've seen fights in the past, it usually spells disaster for him. Yeah, Ar Ari is such a great skirmisher as well that matches the way that these teams have been playing, especially like what like we're saying, it's just a great blind pick as the Swain gonna be picked there as well. That was banned away in game one. So both mid laners picking up champs that were banned. Uh, interestingly though, uh, Clown Gaming was the one who banned away the Ari, although yeah, they hadn't picked their mid laner either. So they were just afraid about uh, uh, no, they had, because they picked the Huey, so they wanted the Ari gone, but they picked the Ari this time instead of the Huey, and Swain going to go back over, and now here comes those other bands. Here comes that Fiora band that we were talking about at the beginning. Yep, just wants to drag it off the table and really kind of hammer home that, you know, it is maybe the champion, but we'll and see what ends up happening. That Swain pain could be going towards that mid, might be going towards bomb. You never quite know until everything is locked in. Trundle is well being banned from the other side. Trundle was banned first rotation in game one instead of the Jinx, so Trundle now going to be off the table because of the Jarvan. I'm assuming that is a Trundle top lane that they have been playing. Gwen going to be the other ban, which was banned away in game one as well. Interestingly to note, uh, Clown Gaming, you know, Blue Pearl Spire banned away the Jarvan in game one. So lots of teams were Clown Gaming banned away the Ari, now they pick it. Blue Pearl Spire banned away the Jarvan, and now they pick it. So they're kind of mixing up their drafts a little bit, and that means we're going to have a very different look to game two. But at the same time, Volibear and Jarvan are pretty gank-heavy champions. Swain likes to skirmish, Ari likes to skirmish, Varus likes to skirmish. So we could see a very proactive and bloody early game, just like we did in game one. I can't imagine that they're going to really change the mentality that quickly mm -hmm. going, all right, let's just back up and uh, hold off for a second. If Nautilus does end up getting picking, that's going to be even more fight potential here. Great level one invade. You find the hook, the drudging, you know, on him. Mm -hmm. It's CC, the lockdown. Once you find someone on this team, they're not going anywhere. Swain can be pulling him back. J4 can be popping up. Claticism, Nautilus, Hook, and Alt. I mean, Sivir's just complimenting the entire team. We'll see what they end up rounding that comp off with. Right now, you do have damage, but depending on what you see on these final two picks on the blue side, might dictate where the Swain is going and what you need, your comp needs for that, you know, compilation. I wonder if it'll be a Morgana support here into the Nautilus, because it's just so powerful. Silas, though, going to be the lock-in, so I think it's going to be a Silas top lane. There are some nice ults to steal. The Jarvan ult is nice. The Swain ult is really big for Silas, and Nautilus ult is pretty decent as well. So I think that's a blind Silas top lane, unless it's a Swain top that they've just been playing, and they have some scrim bucks knowledge that we just don't know about. But here's, we'll find what the support's going to be. What are they cooking here? And they're cooking up a storm here. It is uh, Fight Central that is going to be happening. Uh, Poppy being locked in for the last part. I, I'm i really trying to figure out what could be the support. I mean, I could see the Poppy. Just because, you know, she can definitely... I think it's the Poppy support. Poppy down. support, is, Poppy support yeah. is really good into Nautilus. So I would not be surprised if it's a Poppy support. And we'll see what they end up picking here on the last side. Rumble, Rumble in the jungle. That's when... It, gonna be happening here except for j4 going towards that jungle unless they maybe pull some shenanigans j4 could be topside i've seen that plenty of times as well so i'm not gonna call anything until we get in the game of where and who but uh just look at the mm -hmm. matchups first thoughts are you sticking with your uh forklift crew or are you switching sides hard to say hard to say it's interesting if you kind of take a look at it blue side there for clown gaming they have mostly blue champions and blue pearl spy there on the red side have a lot of red on their team with the so it, like they're kind of picking their their colors correctly but i really don't know i liked how clown gaming played the mid late game they kind of had the the macro lead even though we were not expecting it to happen they played the map pretty well there after the scrappiness of the early game so you know what hmm I really don't know, though, because I think Silas just has some, especially with that Rumble pick, Silas has so many good ults to steal. And when you get to level 16, you can get multiple ults off in a fight. And so being able to start a fight off by stealing away Rumble's ult and then getting into the fight, stealing the Swain ult and just staying alive in there, 
there's a lot that Silas can do. That being said, Blue Pearl Spire, I still do think have a bit of a scaling lead, but it's hard to say for this one. I'm gonna go with Clown Gaming though, just because my Forklift Boys are Forklift Boys. I'm glad you're sticking with what you want. I'm, I'm gonna go the opposite side here too. I'm gonna go with the Blue Pearl Spire, just as I did last time. I like the underdog feel. They had great scraps, a couple of 50-50 plays that could have went either way. They had great objective control that first game, just unfortunately that Fiora getting a little too big and not enough mm -hmm. answers for her. But I, looking at both teams, I can definitely see where the threats are coming from. And I'm sure this is gonna be another brawl for the ages. So if they ever wanna look back at clips and go, where's the holes in our team fights? I think they can just look at last game for the entire season and go, we'll pick this apart team by team by team fight <laughs> and have a whole bunch of highlights. There's probably four hours of VOD review you can do on that last <laughs> game. There's just a lot to analyze because they were moving pieces. They were playing chess where they didn't even bother to tick, tick the clock. They just moved and then moved the next piece, then moved the next piece. They were Speed scrapping chest. it out like crazy. No rules applied. All, you know, the, the tape came off and they just threw, threw down the gauntlet. And I love to see that. Hoping for that again here in game two as we're going to take a quick break to wait for a spectator delay. And we will have that hopefully very exciting game coming at you in just a few minutes don't go anywhere
and we are back here for game two. We had a couple funny, like funky little pauses and we had a great time watching the all chat as they were talking about what was going on. Apparently, Varus had some issues there, had to post bail. Got it sorted out, so we're back into the game. Um, that's all the sarcasm, by the way. Everyone's just fine. But we're here into the game here for game two. Rumble hanging out there topside. And interestingly, we have a Silas support going over for Clown Gaming Forklift Certified. They are Silas support certified here as well in game two. Yeah, Poppy going towards that top lane. And this was a little bit of a, a curveball that I didn't see happening. But, you know, hey, they don't ask how. They ask how many. Did you win the game? bottom line so if it works it works i might have to add this into my repertoire if i see it uh see it happening excited to see how this silas support's gonna work out they are definitely cooking they have the one game lead in the series and they say you know what let's throw caution to the wind a little bit and see what we can do because technically we can lose this one and it doesn't even matter so um i'll just see how it works out for them though like i said a lot of nice ults to steal away though in this game like the rumble like the silas i mean like i'm telling like the swain like the uh jarvan so let's see how it works out for him yeah swain getting a nice little pull there ari with a electrocute proc on the other side there um we'll see how this top lane matchup so they won't, are going to be fighting as much as they did with the aatrox and the fiora um Nautilus here throwing in the hooks, grabbing up that Silas a little bit. Yeah, not super scrappy to kick things off right away. No fun little level two ganks we saw in game one, but maybe level three is the number that we're looking for because I think I think level three is actually when they started to really throw down the gauntlet. So just, just a matter of time before they want to go for these fights. Because mid lane is very scrappy as well between these two. Yeah, just trading back and forth. We don't see any ganks happening just yet, unlike last time. I think two ganks already occurred here in the first couple of minutes after the buffs here. But uh, both looks like J4 and Volibear just kind of sorting through their jungle, figuring out where they want to hit next. Bot lane nicely pushed up. Volibear might be looking towards that. But all the scrapping that's going on mid, you find someone out for just that half second, and that could spell disaster. I have some tea to spill, by the way, on this poppy. Um, Lorlo, the the ex uh, Team Liquid top laner, has been very vocal about this new poppy build that you can go where you go grasp into Eclipse, and apparently you can basically one shot anyone. As we're taking a look there, the Jarvan is sneaking there into the jungle. I don't know if he made it into that middle bush yet or not. No, it's still hanging out there in this side. Knows the timer, but Occupational Hazard is here as well. They Neither team know what's going on. Occupational Hazard is spawned out on Vision, but here comes the Jarvan. They're looking in for the engage. It is catch there onto AFK Boulder, who does flash away, but the Ignite is gone down. AFK Boulder is going to throw down that Q and will survive. Walks away from that Scion Eye of Empire, and here comes the turnaround from that gank. Phantom 22 is stepping forward. The big Glacial Storm is going to go to fall and did snipe out AFK though. The Silas is down. So it's a one for one trade. Phantom 22 picking up another kill. Fallen flashing forward. It's Phantom and it's going to predict the flash onto the Sivir. A double kill going over to this uh, this Varus and picking up a third kill there as well at the beginning of the fight. One kill does go back to Fallen, but it's a three for one kill in the re a three for one fight rather in the counter gank there thanks to occupational hazard stepping forward and making that counter gank happen and it was only because afk boulder stepped forward a bit that that one kill even went down so it could have been a 3-0 clean counter kill nonetheless one kill goes over to sivir and we've got our first action of the game four minutes into the game and it's a banger oh yeah far is oh well poppy going down <laughs> even more action in the top lane oh unfortunately rumble just getting out with a sliver of health flash top lane Top lane, mid lane, Sivir. Oh, Sivir, I'm going everywhere at this point right now. Swain yeah. grabbing the kill, and Volibear trying to follow up. I, I know yeah. if he does need to pose mail, I think he's got enough money now. He's got a 300 bounty on him. He does. <laughs> Boots and Vampire Acceptor for the first buy here. Uh, that's going to be a heck of a lane for this bot lane now. He's, yeah, uh, he's bought his boots, he's bought his Vamp Scepter, and he's paid off bail. He's set to go to play in this game. But a bit of a problem here for Phantom, though, is that Eros on the Swain picked up a solo kill mid lane. Endo on that uh, Rumble picked up a solo kill into the top lane. So that uh, 
Poppy is going to really struggle because you're a melee champion up against this Rumble, and you're not... Just from the build that I'm seeing from Bay Kasha, that item, I don't think he's going to be going for that um, Eclipse build. Maybe you're just trying to get a bit of early MR to survive against the Rumble, but problematic as well for that Ari to get killed 1v1. So Endo does have that level 6. So the uh, Rumble ult is available if a Jarvan wants to look for this one. Yeah, Swain just being a great oppressor here in that lane, as well as that Rumble, just a very giant lane bully. Being able to spit everything out, and if you get a melee range, he overheats, and really starts whacking you for some damage. Boots 2 being completed as well for the Rumble, and that is really going to put even more pressure on that pot. You cannot as much escape, and Dragon being a point of contention right here. We'll see if there decides to be a, a mini fight breakout at all. Don't think you want to. Sivir has a lot of waves still to catch down there, bot side, so they're just going to let that one go over clean. Uh, AFK Boulder has had that nice little roam there towards the top side. Poppy's in trouble, though, at the top of your screen. He's going to throw down that Q. Endo could look to just ult this, but he is going to pick up the shield for now. Cyclone is here with the Ari. Here goes the Rumble ult. Eros is roaming up there as well. Eye of Empire does come down. The charm is going to land, and here comes Occupational Hazard. Going to get slammed back there by the Poppy. Eros pops the ult, but it's not nearly enough health as left. The Cyclone is now looking for the chase onto Islamic Samurai. Can you get the charm to land? Is looking for it, holding the ult for long enough. He's going to use that last ult there. Let's see when the charm is going to come out. The mana is really low. The W is used instead of the Q, and that's going to mean Islamic Samurai on that Jarvan can get away. AFK Boulder is kind of peeking for it, but he's going to get away. AFK Boulder there, that Silas has gotten really close to two kills now. Almost killing out the Rumble earlier on, almost killing off the Jarvan there again. The red buff is going to be stolen over, but all three of those Void Grubs secured by the Jarvan. Only for one death there on the Swain. So objective lead goes over to uh, red side and blue side are going to pick up the kill. I gotta go and double check what the names are. It's Blue Pearl Spire and Clown Gaming FC. There we go. Got them up there on the side of my screen. I'm good to go. Yeah, Samurai just barely getting out of there with his life. That uh, uh, Foxfire just unfortunately not doing enough damage. Charm may have been up at that point, but just kind of maybe spamming those abilities, trying to get maybe an Electrocute proc off, but unfortunately not having it there. Just great moments back and forth here. Fights going on just as we did last game. We'll see how much pressure is going to be put on towards the spot lane even more. Far is growing a little bit of a lead, not too much. Sivir doing a good job of doing that wave clear. I was kind of hoping for the pizza skin, to be honest. I'm a little disappointed. It's usually pizza, pizza Sivir or nothing. Charm does land there onto the Swain, but it's really just a quick little trade of health bars. Both can be popping out those... Uh, what do you call those green things? Let me grab it really quick. The uh, refillable potions, that's right. So they're just popping their health bars and popping out their mana a little bit. Just having a good little scrappy time in their mid lane. They're both one and one. They can have, they've got the space to scrap a little bit. They do, they got room for it. Plus you got the dark seal that's gonna be going on for that Ari. So the more she's involved, the happier she's gonna be. It looks like Roa is gonna be complete on the other side towards that Swain, really gonna get that build up. Once you get that completed, let it start stacking and then become that late game monster. We saw that fight at the Baron Pit. Unfortunately, it blows the ult, but there's no resistance. There's no health and just not enough to really sustain and kind of blew up at that point. So we're hoping in the next 10 minutes we'll see that fully stacked. And then we'll really see that Swain get in that really heavy mix of everything. Oppie, I just want to shout out really quick, has been doing a really great job of, of not like falling farther behind than she could. Uh, is down about 10 CS, but that's a Rumble, and Rumble is notoriously very oppressive in lane. Just taking some very aggressive trades to Poppy is, and winning them out, actually. So Poppy is actually going to have a bit of prio onto this wave, forcing Endo to back off a little bit, because Poppy can use that ultimate once those, ult those cooldowns are back up. It can probably one-shot this Rumble and CC him the entire time. So, yep, Rumble on the top of your screen there, I mean, on the top of your minimap, is going to get a reset. So Poppy is trying to win out in the top side, despite giving over that early solo kill. As bot side, Varus continues to win out, although Fallen on that Sivir, unsurprisingly, is just clearing the waves very well and has even a bit of a CS lead for herself. Yep, not grabbing uh, the tier on that as well, so doing a great job of keeping that mana pool you know, in check and making sure she's not falling so low that she can't spam the abilities or use the ult if needed as well here. A minute left for the dragon, we'll see if that's another point of contention, or if they're happy just letting that come over 
to the blue side once again here. Being pushed up, Volibear might be looking to do some damage as well. Follows up it's there. level six. It's gonna pop the ult. There we go. The ult just popped. Varus ult getting follow up immediately after that, and it's an immediate kill. Silas tanking up the tower a little bit is gonna drop down just about 350 health. But sorry, if you can look there, is going for a bit of a chase onto the Swain top side. They're just throwing their abilities back and forth like nothing has changed. Forgetting that there's even a rest of the map. Bay Caution taking a kind of a bad trade there, but Overdrive is popped there by the, I forget what it's called, the passive where you use all of your team bar. They might look for a dive here onto the Poppy. Jarvan is going to pop back using his Cloud Kevin and going to get knocked into the Flash. is going to be used. Jarvan might be in trouble. Is he take one more tower shot? He will, despite the flash, and Jarvis gonna drop. Poppy taking a kill back one for one in the tower dive. A very nice play by Bay Caution, who has been showing these mechanics in game one on the Fiora, and is now doing the same thing as the Poppy as here comes Cyclone on the Ari. Has that spirit rush enabled, uses one of them right away. He's trying to bait out those dodges there. The flash used, and it's gonna miss the charm there. So all three of those spirit rushes charges are gonna be used, but Caution is going to be thrown to the wind despite the, I don't even know that's what you want to say, but I'm going to say it anyways. Rumble does flash away from that charm from Cyclone, who is a little bit too impatient with it. And Endo gets away on the Rumble. Roam there for Cyclone results in nothing more than a flash blown by this Rumble, which is probably a good thing if you're the Poppy. But uh, that being said, Grubs are going to go over to... Um, Clown Gaming FC and Blue Pearl Spire now are going to be the ones to pick up a dragon there on the bot side. Yeah, that top lane Bobby just being able to shove the J4 in his own Claticism, flash out, pick up your shield on the mm -hmm. other side, that enough survivability just for him to take that extra tower shot was like a cherry on top. It was just gorgeous to see. Yes, you're down a little bit of CS, but you've proven your point of, hey, come within knocking distance of me and you're going to feel the wrath. The Poppy is definitely pretty tanky as we see a hook land onto Phantom. Sivir is going to be popping out a lot of damage there. The ult is going to be used. Who's actually trapped under tower? The Q is hitting its target. Now Fall needs to be very careful not to throw any auto attacks out. Does throw out the Q, but it's a low damage. Phantom with a double kill. Flashes forward, lands that and that arrow. Lands that last auto attack. Here comes Occupational Hazard. The Kaida Clip is going to be popped. The Eye of Empire is not enough because Phantom 22 has that rune that gives him the health back whenever he kills. I don't even know what it's called because I'm just a caster. I don't play this game as much as I used to, and the runes change every 30 minutes, and that's okay, because Riot is definitely a company that knows what they're doing, but Varus gets another set of kills onto himself, and it's now a 7-0 Varus with that Blade of the Rune King completed, and it's going to have a huge influx of gold, 700 gold bounty onto this AD carry, and it's a massive lead for the Varus in the bot side. That was just a massive play, just individual talent right there going on. I mean, just being able to kite out those two under tower, great alt, rumble. Fade away, picks up the kill there, but oh. sorry, for the Varus, just being able to snipe the Nautilus within range, making sure everyone had to move out of the alt, otherwise they get caught. J4 having a little bit of hesitation right underneath the tower, had the Claticism, but did not use it. And then when he turned, it was too little too late on that, unfortunately, for them. So a couple more items being picked up. Seven zero zero. That's that's dangerous. And this this is a nice build here for the Varus as well. Going that on hit style is going to be pretty good because outside of that, you have that Rumble Jarvan pro, uh, combo, which can be very strong in team fights. But if you can successfully ignore that, as here comes Ari, he's going to look for the charm. He's going to land there onto the Nautilus. Silas comes flying in with those chains. The Flash is going to be blown by the Nautilus, but it's too late. The kill is already down. No, Endo did teleport in. Here comes Phantom 22, though. Has a lot of damage. The heal comes in, though. The Charm is going to land there by Cyclone. And the Q does come out. The Ignite being burned there by... Um, here comes Silas. <laughs> Not Silas, the Swain. The ult is going to be popped and popped again. The hook is going to pull in the Ari. Flash going to be forced by Ari as Swain gets a nice little return kill, shutting down the Varus. It's a big set of shutdown, but look, Varus is so far ahead, has died, and still has a bounty on his head. Yeah, completing that Rage Blade and a thousand gold went over to Swain. He just completed that Roa. Next back, we're going to see what he comes up with if it's going to be. You know, Banshees, you could go Zanyas if he wants to go a little bit more damage heavy. He wants Leandres, Storm Razor, depending on what he wants right now. That's going to be a big shutdown gold coming back and really opening up the door. Poppy having a little bit more top lane presence here now. That Rumble TP bottom almost has a tower. We'll see.
power shots coming in here. Volley Bear also towards that top side can help and Rumble just being a little bit respectful, backing off there and giving up that tower. And that is first tower going down. They, they caution has been playing very interestingly indeed has gotten solo killed twice but at the same time has managed to leave uh the tower basically untouched up there while also taking the first tower gold and a poppy into a rumble which is very odd indeed as afk boulder might be in trouble though has to dash out but it's still gonna get caught up by the cataclysm uses the ult to steal away the silver ult i think that might have been the wrong one to steal there but he tries to use it for the movement speed, but it's not nearly enough. Gets caught up there by the Jarvan. Was caught on some vision there that was in that you know, that forward vision there. Uh, that was probably placed by Ao Penguini. That's going to allow them to shove this wave out and try to set up for some prio onto the dragon. Yeah, dragon coming up 1-1 one, one now. And it looks like Mountain Drake will be the one to be contesting all the way through. Just making everyone that much more tankier. You love to see that on the Swain, the J4 and that Nautilus here as well as the Rumble, but those main three right there, you know, you get three or four dragons on that Swain, he is gonna be a monster that just cannot die. Hopefully I don't know about fight. this path here from the Vars. It's gonna pop oh. the ult, but the Swain pull is going to land that claw. Islamic Samurai got really low though, and it's actually going to drop. Phantom gonna pick up that kill. They caution to throw the ult, but it's gonna miss. And that means Occupational Hazard is stuck there all by his lonesome four against one, and it's gonna drop there as well. A one for two trade fight in favor of Blue Pearl Spire. They've got Pryo onto the dragon. No junglers on either side though, so Ari or the Silas or the Poppy could easily steal this one away if they have the opportunity or the angle to do so. Yeah, Swain, good job finding that pick out, grabbing even more, having that Rhylize now, it can really keep everyone towards him with that ultimate. Charm going out, fighting the mid lane. Yeah, Charm did land, but that's not going to mean too much. The ult is going to be popped there by the Rumble, and Rumble is going to get the kill there onto the Silas, and now Poppy's in trouble, a step too far forward. And that last auto attack from Sivir does go out. Fallen now on a killing spree. Jarvan has showed back up to the mid lane just in case. Cyclone wanted to step forward as well. And that's going to be a rotation over to the Dragon. Arrows on the bot side picked up that tower as well. And it was about a 3,500 gold lead. And it is now basically evened up. Yeah, just about 300. Give or take for each side. But now we see bounties coming towards the other side. Sivir holding that bounty as well as Rumble on the other side. Respawning back. Poppy here in five seconds. We'll see you. What's going to be happening? Pinked out in the mid lane and possibly another fight happening. Yep, Var is going to use the ult, flashes away, it's staying alive for the moment, throwing out that Q does a lot of damage. Cyclone picking up one there on the back. Samurai has picked up that kill onto the Swain. Uh, Cyclone is dashing forward, has the ult reset, but it's not quick enough. Does pick up the Rumble, but Arrow is picking one back there. Poppy is now kind of stuck all by herself. Let's see if she can get a kill onto Fallen. What really close to doing it, but Islamic Samurai and that Swain gonna pick up the kill there as well. And it is now about a 500 gold lead in favor of Blue Pearl Spire. They are winning these team fights out very well for themselves. Yeah, you talked about the scaling that's gonna be happening, and with these team fights, they get more and more close to that, even though we're not in the 20 minute mark, it feels like they're in that mid 20s feel. You have the row completed. Now you're gonna be having the Riley's completed as well as the mid lane should be going for that Leandre's completion there. On the other side, that Swain just burning through every single thing he touches as well. Two items complete here for the AD carry and I'm sure J4 is pocketing a little bit of money in his hands as well. These team fights come out of nowhere as we've seen the entire first game and as well as the second game and the next one unfortunately if you find yourself on the losing end i feel like you're going to be losing a lot more than just you know a little bit of your lead it's going to be the towers the objectives these teams are very aggressive and they're willing to put forth that effort to make sure we have the lead let's see if we can secure it yeah, very close game here. The overall AFK Boulder is kind of looping around. Endo doesn't know about this. It's kind of caught in a 1v3 situation here. Occupational Hazard looping around as well. Here comes the pick onto the Rumble. The ult is going to be used away. Both of them kind of popping it here. AFK Boulder did get pretty low, but Occupational Hazard going to pick that one up. Came charging through, but that means you've sent three topside. Phantom has to back off here from this tower. Does throw the ulti out there. Trying to throw those auto attacks out. Throwing down a lot of damage. Are you going to get the Q? The auto attack does come out. It has a lot of stacks. 
kind of going for this Gwinsu's Range Blade. AFK Boulder on the top of your screen there, though. Picks off the Nautilus, trying to run away through the top side. And uh, that's going to be the kill going over to the Silas, who is now two kills on this very strange pick that hasn't worked out super well for them, but you know, it does have eight assists and two kills, so not the worst thing in the world. Here comes a teleport from Ari. That might be a bit aggressive there. Cyclone going to have to flash away from that one. Uh, teleport there coming as well from the Rumble, I believe it is. And they're just going to back off from the Dragon, or from the Baron, rather. No, it was a nice little attempt to try to steal that one away, but they are quick to the uh, the, the plans of Clown Gaming Forklift Certified, and nothing is going to come of it. But you don't lose yeah. anything from it either besides Cyclone's ult, uh, Flash, rather, and Teleport. Yeah, they had the inside track. It was a good timing to try to sneak if they could, but as soon as the response happened on the other side, they just need to back off and say, all right, we'll, we'll happily reset here. Yes, you get the TP blowings, but that team fight, I I can't imagine it would be going in their favor if they stayed on Baron any longer. Dragon coming up here in a minute and a half. We'll see if the teams decide to kind of pull the attention away from Baron, or if they say, hey, we'll trade one objective from the other. Which one are you going to choose here? Varus now completing one of the newer items here, Terminus. Um, the light mm. and dark switches before the champion. Great job, or great item for him using that utilization as well from both sides there. We'll see mid lane here. Not too many stacks on that Dark Seal. Not completed as well for the Soul Stealer, but we will see what happens. It looks like we have a little bit of vision clearing going on. On the other side, they might be looking a little bit more towards that Dragon than Baron side. Both teams just content to kind of relax and calm down here for just a moment as, you know, Dragon is going to be spawning here in about 55 seconds. So I think they're content to let the Baron co contest halter for now and transition all their Vision Prio 2 bot side for that Dragon. Both these teams want to get these uh, Mountain Dragons because they're good for the Swain. It's good for champions as well, like that Vala Bear, that Poppy, and that Silas. Uh, Nautilus likes it. Jarvan likes it. Everybody wants to have this ability as here comes the hook. They have caught AFK Boulder, who's going to be dropping for the sixth time. Step forward a bit too aggressively forgetting that you have a Nautilus who can't just lock you down for the whole time. And that's going to be a 5v4 in favor of Blue Pearl Spire. They're going to have all the prio in the world that they want for this dragon, which should go going, going over to them, which is going to give them a triple soul point. Meanwhile, though, Phantom and Vague Caution are up there trying to solo away the Baron. So maybe that gives them enough time to stall out for AFK Boulder to get back onto the map as the, Baron, the dragon hasn't spawning for another few seconds yet. Silas is going to be back in time and they're back onto the Baron once again. Yeah, I think they're splitting right now, trying to see if they can maybe poke them off, but that could be a bad idea. Pull the hook Silas is gonna land. Ari both come in. Swain has stepped forward. The flash coming out from Phantom is gonna be good. Silas, Zimmer is down. Phantom is healing through all this damage from Arrows. He's gonna live and still continue to live. It's three kills going over. Jarvan stayed down there on the dragon. Only Endo alive yet as Jarvan is very slowly thumping away at that thing, but they win the fight 5v4, and that is going to mean Baron going over to Clown Gaming FC, unless Rumble can do something, but no, it's going to run down their bot side to help secure that dragon. Yes, you do get that dragon, you do put your team at a soul point, but boy, did it cost you a lot. I have to throw in the question of that call. Why are you splitting that team as we've seen these team fights become so close and you're only sending three? Send them maybe towards the top side, maybe a little bit of poke everywhere, but sending them all, you know, to your death basically at 3v5. Yes, health bars went super low, but you don't get Soul Dragon. That was an Elder Dragon. That wasn't a do or die dragon. I think maybe dragging everyone over there, or hey, we're going to give up Baron. We're going to take the dragon. We'll hunker and turtle down and try to get for another catch out. Uh, this is a big opportunity for Clown Gaming FC if they want to look for a 2-0 in this game despite having locked in a very strange Silas support. This is their chance to do it right here. They've got the Baron. They don't have any imminent threats of any soul conditions for another five or at least four minutes. So this is their chance to really get a big goalie for themselves. They're pushing out multiple lanes at once here. Bot being pushed in by the Ari. Mid lane, AFK Boulder jumped over onto the Nautilus and... Uh, the glacial storm going to come out, but it's not too meaningful. Just kind of zoning off. 
Uh, mid lane, though, it is, looks like it's going to be the focus as they're jumping through that really fast. Phantom 22 has a ton of attack speed now on that Varus. Four items now completed. Has the Terminus done, like you were saying earlier, and the Wits End completion as well, which is going to be really big for staying alive in those fights against the Rumble and against the Swain there. Yeah, those Varus also are going to hit like a truck, whether you kind of see them coming or not. Easily stacking up the passive and then procking with the Q or the E, even the alt, even at that. Just being able to go through everyone like their butter. Uh, Swain trying to make something happen here. I haven't seen that third item quite complete, so I might be sitting on some items. Picking off a little bit of people, but not able to fully engage here. They might look for Nautilus alt. And here comes another fight. Here they go, Sivir has popped the ult, here comes Swain, uh, the Silas rather jumps in, pops the ult, and that Zonya's Phantom is on a rampage now, still free firing there in the back line, Occupational Hydra dives in, shuts down the tower, a big Jarvan ult is going to kill the Varus, but at what cost, Islamic Samurai is going to drop there, Fallen has dropped as well, and then Iari is going to spear rush in with the uh, Volibear securing the last kill, is going to get out of dodge just in time for that last tower shot to not hit, it is a 5 Kills owing over to Clown Gaming and only two dropping with just the bot lane. This is going to mean the base is going to be broken open and with 20 second death timers on everyone except for the Nautilus, they could get a solid chunk of damage down into this base. Maybe even take a Nexus turret if they really want to. Yeah, Nautilus no, is not, not going to pose to. too much of a threat. They might just run out of here. If there was another lane like mid lane available, if that was pushed out, we could have definitely seen another tower in hip. Just going to clear out some vision reset you got a whole bunch of gold you're sitting on and start firing back at it again also that silas i need to note he picked up that swain alt and did a good job of sticking in there as best he could through all that it, mm -hmm. yeah picked up with the swain alt and then hit that zonya's right away gets a kill assist and tons of healing comes popping through with that and is able to stay alive doing so much damage for a long time so you know a great steal there of the swain alt there by the support of clown gaming and They've snowballed up to, what is that, an 8,000, 7,000 gold lead. Yeah. I The Sivir, 250 farm right now into the Wendy's. Like she's doing a great job of keeping herself in that game, but unfortunately just hasn't quite capitalized on being able to really impact it as much as we'd hope. So Rumble here on the top side, doing a good job still of clearing everything out. But that Poppy, a nuisance. It doesn't matter what the KD is. They are just going to be running it down towards that top side, grabbing multiple people and just really wreaking havoc. You know, who do you send? Yeah, it's very difficult to answer the top side push that Poppy can just stay super alive, has that hollow radiance, and I'm guessing that Negatron Cloak is going to build into a Kanic Rookern there for her as well, just to have that bonus MR shield on top of all of that. So this Poppy is going to be very tanky, can throw down any just disruption in teamfights whenever she wants to. The nice thing about having the inhibitor down in the bot side is it gives you tons of cryo onto these dragon fights because it's going to it's a naturally pushing lane for yourself down there. Sure, you have to contest for the mid lane, but you just have a free push bot side and Ari is taking advantage of that. In the bot side, dragon though spawning in about 25 seconds. So this could be big for Blue Pearl Spire if they want to get back into it. Mountain Soul would be really nice for them. Yeah, that would ensure your team to have a little bit of that cushion and breathing room. You know, you got Elder, yes, in the next five minutes after that. But that initial, you know, resistance to that burst. And looks like they are walking Here comes Poppy. Here. Poppy comes over, lands the flash, but gets rooted right away. The fight, though, is going to break out. A big ultimate comes out, forcing Phantom 22 back in the fight. It's going to be auto-attacking pretty quickly, though. The ult comes out there onto Ayo Peguini. The Nautilus is down, but Ari has been killed in return, as well as the Silas. Now two drop each side. Eros is staying alive for the moment, but then gets chunked down. Here goes the Jarvan, going to get killed there as well. Phantom 22 is just throwing out those auto-attacks at Mach 65. And Ace now going to come down. Only the Ari and the Silas have dropped. That's another... Uh, two for five, or I, I don't even know how to call that. Three dive, uh, th five dive for uh, Blue Pearl Spire. Only two drop for Clown Gaming. They have the AD carry. They have the Poppy. They have the Jarvan, uh, not the Jarvan, the Volibear. 20 second death timers yet again, except for the Nautilus. One tower dropped. The second tower going to drop here as well. And ladies and gentlemen, we have for ourselves a 2-0 victory in favor of Clown Gaming, unless Nautilus can be a hero. They may have put the bat symbol up, but I don't think he's going to be answering the call, unfortunately. 
there was an attempt. I respect it. But 2-0 victory going over to Clown gaming forklift certified they are now 2-0 certified as well in this match gg well played great games by both teams you know initially fighting back and forth and back and forth it's just that little mid push that happened on both games where someone got caught out you know bad you know i want to highlight in that game once again sending those three people over to check baron you know what mm -hmm. in your mind do you think that was the tipping point for the game i think realistically what happened is the same thing happened in both games game one it was kind of that close game where on the one hand you had the jinx on the other hand you had the var uh, you had the fiora and then the baron gets taken the game just gets closed out and it was because of some sneaky little shenanigans they steal they kind of sneak the baron away and here they do it again in game two they kind of split the map apart they take the baron they win a fight and use that to snowball into another victory so the same ending the same way the game ends both times and uh, Clown Gaming FC just happened to be on top of it. Well played to them for using that, despite how skirmishy and back and forth both games were for the first 20 minutes, they play around the Baron brilliantly and use that to get a 2-0. Yeah, great job there by them. If you had to give an MVP, who would you give it to? It's hard to say because Vay Caution was definitely the MVP of game one. Phantom 22, definitely the MVP of game two. But across the whole thing, I'm giving it to the Vala Bear and to the Nunu at the beginning. Occupational Hazard just did such a great job. Yeah, you see an 8,000 there on the damage charts, but it's a Vala Bear. He did his job. 10 KDA here in game two, the highest KDA in the game. And in game one was so impactful to snowball that Fiora and secure that Baron both times. Shout out to Occupational Hazard. I'm giving you the MVP for this one. No argument there. Any other last comments, thoughts, words of wisdom? I, I also uh, just want to shout out to Fallen. Fallen had a very great series. The Jinx was brilliant. And in the game two was getting closer and closer to that tipping point where Sivir can win games out, was doing their very best to keep up in the gold, keep up with that, that, uh, that, that CSing had a huge CS lead over Phantom 22 and, you know, just did a great job overall in this series. So shout out to you, uh, Sivir and Jinx there for, uh, Blue Pearl Spire. Unfortunately, it wasn't quite enough to win this one out. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Great AD carry games by both great positioning, farming up nicely, great team fights, but unfortunately the scales of fate tipped the other way. That's how League of Legends goes, though. It's, it's not a one-player game. It's a team sport, and the team of Clown Gaming Forklift Certified here with the 2-0. I'm Sharpie. This has been Gitano, and very happy to cast for you guys, and we will see you next week. Same day, same time. New teams, new match, new bangers here in Blue Otter League, Emerald Division. Have a good night, everyone. We'll see you next time. Have a great one.